everybody, welcome back to another build video. In this video, we're gonna take all of this and turn it into a beautiful reclaimed wood rolling drink bar. So we've got some reclaimed pallet wood here, got some two by fours, an edge glued piece for the countertop. So in the end, we are gonna take this and turn it into this. All right, so the wood we're using for our countertop is a spruce pine fir edge glued panel. It measures three quarters of an inch thick by 24 inches by 72 inches. So two feet by six feet is how big our bar is gonna be. These are really nice. You can buy them from your local hardware store. They're already finished for you. So you could go ahead and stain this and polyurethane it, but for me, I don't really trust it. It's not gonna be as smooth as I want it to. So I'm actually gonna sand it down and I'll show you guys how to do that later on in the video so you get a nice smooth finish. Now I'm actually gonna offset this bar with the frame. I want it to overhang six inches on each side. So we're gonna offset the frame, make it a little bit smaller. The frame will sit inside and we're gonna trim out the wood all nice so it looks really good on top. And then on the sides, our pallet wood is gonna go there and it's gonna give us a nice rustic look on the sides. So let's get started on making the frame. We're gonna start cutting some pieces of lumber down. All right, so for our two by four here, since we're gonna be offsetting this bar six inches from both sides, we're only gonna need our frame to be five feet wide. So right here, 60 inches, five feet, this is where we're gonna make our first mark. So for these two by fours here, we're gonna need four of these that are five feet each. Four of them will be for the top and the bottom frame. So go ahead and do that. So we got five feet. Remember, if you saw my last video, this is my trusty little trim square. I love this thing. It's so much better than one of those big bulky speed squares. It fits right on your dimensional lumber up to about four inches. So there we go, 60 inches. So I'm gonna need four of these. All right, so I've got my four 60 inch boards cut. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the leftovers from that, which is this, should be about 36 inches left on here. So we're gonna take these and we wanna cut these down to 11 inches. We need four 11 inch pieces. And the reason for that being is because we want our frame to be six inches offset from the outside of the tabletop we're putting on. And the two by fours, even though they're called two by fours, they actually only measure three and a half inches wide. So we need to take whatever we're doing and subtract seven because two of these will be on each side, three and a half inches times two, seven inches. So we just need to measure out and we need to do four of these at 11 inches. So we'll go ahead, 11 inches, we'll mark these, cut them all up. We should be ready to put together the top and bottom of our frame. All right, so we've got all our boards cut for our initial frame. Four 60 inch boards and four 11 inch boards. The next thing we need to do is drill some pocket holes. So pocket holes, are amazing this is a pocket hole jig it's made by craig it's not too expensive i think it's about forty dollars and essentially what this does is it comes and hangs on the end of your board just like this and then allows you to drill holes using this bit that has a stopper on it and this bit will go in and drill into the wood and it'll stop just where it needs to so you can run screws through these out the side and into your other board so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set this pocket hole jig up correctly to drill the right holes, and then we're gonna drive them in to attach our frame together. All right, so pocket hole jig is set up for a two by four. We have the pocket drill hole jig set to one and a half inches because the material thickness is an inch and a half. So we gotta set it on that setting. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this, but our stopper here on the drill bit is also set to one and a half inches. That way we're gonna stop just where we need to to do this. Now for this, we're also gonna, you wanna use inch and a half or inch and five eighths inch screws to join the board. So let's go ahead and get our pocket holes drilled. You have your pocket holes drilled there. Go ahead and undo this, take it off, and that is what you're left with pocket hole holes. 
whatever else you want to call it. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to go ahead and do this on both sides of these boards. All of these boards are going to have pocket holes on each side, so that's all your 11 inch boards, and this will allow us to join our frame together. All right, so after we have all our pocket holes drilled, we're ready to stick this together. Now I want to correct myself from the earlier clip that you saw. With the inch and a half thick two by fours, you actually want to use two and a half inch screws. And I believe I said use one and a half inch. So make sure you're using two and a half inch screws. Now for this, if you have a big enough wood clamp, which they do sell clamps, you could clamp this together on the outside. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those. So we're just going to be doing this the old fashioned way. I'm going to grab myself just a scrap piece of wood, something that you want to make sure is straight, just so we can flush this up here. I want to make sure this is nice and flush so we get a very good square board. Now, assuming your miter saw is cutting straight, this is going to be square. You're cutting at zero degrees. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to use my foot here to keep these boards from going anywhere and just pull on this side so it keeps it nice and tight there. Now with our pocket holes already drilled, we've got a starting point. So we're just going to go ahead, put our screws in here and then we're just going to drive them in. I had a little bit of bounce there, so I want to make sure this is nice and flushed up. Pull it tight, and then we're just going to head back in. And it looks like I'm going to need a longer bit. So once again, now that I'm back, I'm going to make sure this is nice and square, flushed up everywhere. And there we have it. That first screw is in. And that's going to hold pretty nicely. So now we just want to do our other one here. So we'll pull that in. And that's nice right there. All right, now to the other side. Now I guess I should mention here, if you do want to make sure this is perfectly square, and just grab yourself speed square here, throw it in there. Now this is just about, that is just about square right there. That is actually looking really good. There's a small gap down here, but that's most likely because the circle saw blade wasn't cutting exactly square, but that's okay. It's not gonna throw us off that much. Got a pretty good square there and a perfect square there. So we're looking good. So now what we wanna do is we wanna do the other side of this one, set the bottom up just the same way, use your other four pieces of wood you cut, put them together just like this. All right, so now that I've got the bottom and the top of the frame put together, we're gonna to check it out. So right here, 18 inches, right on the dot. It's exactly what we want for that six inch offset. Check the bottom real quick. Yep, also 18 inches. And I already checked the other one, all good for 18 inches. So actually the next thing that I think we're gonna do here is I wanna make sure my tabletop is secured very well. So instead of just securing the tabletop on the ends, I'm actually gonna go and cut two more 11 inch boards and I'm gonna place them in the middle here so I can get a little bit more support out of the tabletop. Now with this being such a small frame, it's not super important, but I do have the wood to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut two more 11 inch boards Get the pocket holes in those and put them right smack dab in the middle of these frames just so i have a little bit more places to actually uh, stick the tabletop to the top of the frame all right so now i've got the top and the bottom done and a little bit more supportive so i put these in here once again just two more 11 inch pieces the next thing we're going to have to move on to is going to be the corner supports so the corner supports are really going to tie both of these together now your typical bar height is 40 to 42 inches. I'm actually gonna go with 42 inches on this, but just like we did here, we had to cut these down to 11 inches to account for the width here. We're gonna have to do the same thing for this, except for the width up here. So two by fours are an inch and a half thick here. So accounting for both sides of this, we're gonna have to subtract three from that 42 inches. So my next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut these two by fours down. I'm gonna cut four pieces down to 39 inches. So 39 inches plus the three inches that we're getting from here, it's gonna be 42 inches. Our bar is gonna be 42 inches tall plus three quarters of an inch for the tabletop. 
All right, so these are our 39 inch pieces for the corner. Now for these, we're still gonna do pocket holes for these, but this time, instead of doing them on the face of the wood here, we're gonna do pocket holes on the side here. So the screws drive in this way. And we're gonna do this just so it makes it a little bit easier. Trying to hold the frame up and drill through the top of it is gonna be a little bit difficult, making sure it's square. So we'll be able to flush up and secure these much better if we're drilling the pocket holes into the side and through the end of the wood. So let's go ahead and get done with that. All right, so now for our legs. So I've got the pocket holes drilled. We're gonna use this one just to keep it nice and flushed up here. We're gonna go ahead and set the board just like this. Pull it up against this two by four. Make sure everything is all nice and flush. And we just wanna push this over right to the edge of this board here. If you have something else, you can flush it up here as well. It's entirely up to you. And for me, I'm just gonna eyeball it. I've been doing this for a while. So once we have it lined up here, now for this part, we are gonna use our inch and five eighths inch screws. We don't want to, we don't wanna punch through the top of the wood with those two and a half inch screws, which is likely what would happen here. So we wanna use something that's a little bit smaller. So that's gonna be the inch and five eighths inch screws here for these pocket holes. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. And then drive it right in there. And now we're in there good and tight. And we're gonna come over here Make sure we're flush with the end of this board here again. I'm gonna grab our second one, drive that one in there as well. And that's it. Now we're nice and flush on both sides. We got our support in there and that's not going anywhere. Now make sure when you do these pocket holes, you're doing them on both ends because we're gonna to have to attach another one of these on the other end for the base of the top. No matter which way you look at it, they're identical. So. All four of these are gonna go in just like that, and then we'll work on the cross members for the rest of the frame. All right, now that we have got all four of our legs on, all we're gonna to have to do now is we're just gonna grab the other part of our frame here, which is gonna be this, and just wanna put it right on top of here, we'll line it all up, and we'll drive the screws in here just the same way, same way we did as the rest of these pieces. Now make sure your pocket holes here are gonna be facing this way, along with the other pocket holes here. That way, they'll be on the bottom. You won't be able to see those. They're gonna get covered up anyway, so I guess it's not that big of a deal, but I always like to have my pocket holes facing the same direction. So we're gonna come over here. We're just gonna to need to line this up, make it flush here. Make sure we get good. All right, so that is looking very good. Grab my first screw here, get into the pocket hole. All right, then I'm just gonna apply some pressure here so we don't move. And there we go, that one's in there good. All right, assuming all your cuts are good, everything is nice and square, this is what you'll end up with, a nice level bar. So everything's looking good right now. Pretty happy with how we're going. Next thing we're gonna need to do is get some middle support so that our pallet wood is actually gonna screw to, and I'll show you exactly how to do that now. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is those middle supports. Now for my pallet wood, I don't have long enough pieces that are gonna go from all the way up here to all the way down here, so I'm gonna have to trim them down. Now considering this is 42 inches, each one of my pieces are gonna be 21 inches. So what I wanna do for that is I wanna cut another board that's gonna go right here all the way across and I'm also gonna put one here as well as here in the middle. So my 21 inch pallet boards will screw in up to this and they'll meet in the middle of this two by four here and then we can put another pallet, uh, pallet board down this way that will screw in the middle and to down here. That way we'll have a nice look. It'll be nice and clean looking and just because of the wood for the pallet wood, we're gonna have a lot of different shades in there, so it's still gonna look really nice. But if you can find pallet wood that'll stretch all the way, I'm still gonna suggest putting this board in here because it is gonna give the bar more rigidity and more stability. So definitely wanna do that. Now, from this end to that end, again, is 60 inches, so five feet. 
So we're gonna have to take in, once again, into account the width of these two by fours here, which is gonna be a total of three inches. So I'm gonna to need to cut two by four here. That is 57 inches. This is the same width as the ones we did up here. So this one is gonna be 11 inches. So two more 11 inch two by fours and one that is 57 inches. We're gonna measure these out right in the middle, put them right there so everything is good to go for our pallet wood. All right, so now to do these middle supports. So for an easier time, flip your frame up on whichever side that you're gonna be putting your board in. For this, you wanna make sure that they are facing this way. That way, you'll have a nice three and a half inch surface here to screw your pallet wood into. You don't wanna have it, if you have it like this, you're only working with an inch and a half here, which is not good, because then you'd be real close. So you wanna make sure that your boards are gonna be like this. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna drill pocket holes in these again. These ones are gonna be also in the face of this wood, just like this. And we're gonna do the same thing for this support here, the 57 inch one. We'll do the same thing for the other side, which is out of frame right now. All right, there is the frame to our bar. So from here, we have only the fun stuff left. The fun stuff is gonna be attaching the tabletop, making it look really nice and pretty, putting the pallet wood on. Now, one thing I will mention that I am gonna do in this video, but I'm not gonna include the steps to because it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna put one more support right here in the middle so I can actually put a shelf inside this bar so you can set your drinks on and whatnot. Now that's entirely up to you, it is optional. Maybe you have shelves behind where you're gonna put this that you put your alcohol and your liquor at. Maybe you have a fridge somewhere that you might wanna stick in here. So that is entirely up to you. As for me, I am gonna put a shelf about midway through this to stack some other stuff up and put cups and drinks, anything else that I want in there. But for you guys, like I said, entirely up to you. So it's actually getting pretty late tonight, so I'm gonna call it quits for the night. I'll be back tomorrow and we're gonna work on this some more. Get the tabletop, get all the pallet wood on, and I'll be back soon. All right, so it is a new day. I'm gonna get back to work on this. So the next thing that I wanna do after finishing out my frame is I have all of my pallet boards laid out over here and I've put through everything I have and I've picked the ones that I wanna use for this. So the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna go through this and I'm gonna lay them out on here just as I would when I screw them down. I wanna make sure everything fits. I wanna have the right fitment. Now again, this is 60 inches wide. My pallet boards range anywhere from five and a quarter to five and three quarters inches wide. So depending on what I use, I'm not exactly gonna get a perfect line up here. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I wanna lay these out and then how I wanna do the ends to wrap it around. So I'm gonna go ahead, start with this. We're gonna lay it out and see what happens, what it looks like. All right, that looks good. I think this looks good. I think this is gonna do for me. So this is what the front of it is gonna look like, but obviously I'm gonna to have to trim all these boards down. Um, so from this point, what I'm gonna do here, is I'm gonna go outside to the chop saw. I'm gonna to have to take all of these boards, cut the tops off of them so it's nice and flush. Now for the top part of this, I'm gonna measure 21 inches. And that'll take me from the top of this down to the middle of this support two by four that's here in the middle. Now, I don't want to go all the way to the ground on the other side where the wheels are going to be. I want there to be a little bit of space so they can roll. It's not going to scrape on anything when it's rolling. So I'm going to go 22 inches on that side, 21 inches for these boards on this side, and then I'll get them all 
screwed in. So as for the ones on the end there, I'm just gonna have to make a mark on it and rip it down. It's just gonna be a little bit too long uh, for this because it's not all perfect. Some of these are five and a quarter, some are five and a half, some are five and three quarters, just depends. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna get started with that, rip all these boards down and start getting them installed. All right, so I've got all of my tops cut down to 21 inches and I've got all of my bottoms cut to 22 inches. Now my next step here, what you're noticing here and right here, I've just taken a scrap piece of wood that I have laying around and screwed it into the top. Now don't worry about screwing into the top because this up here is gonna get covered by the countertop. I've just put this here as a guide to line my wood up. Same thing over here, this is a piece of pallet wood that wasn't in really great shape. So I went ahead and screwed it to the side so I have a nice 90 degree guide here to line up my first board. Then I can shoot all the way down. I'll move this down once I get past this one just to keep it in a nice line. Once I finish that, I'll do the same to the other side. First thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna make a line right here in the middle so I know where the middle of this is. Regardless of that, all of my boards should line up right into the middle of that two by four there anyways. So we just go like that, should be there. But the line, not super necessary. I just wanna see how close I am to the middle with each of these boards. So let's get going. All right, that's it, that's the first 10. So from here, the last board here, our 11th one, or my 11th one, is gonna go just like this. Now what I'm gonna do for this here is I'm gonna grab a pencil, mark under here, then I'm gonna have to grab my skill saw, rip that off so it fits perfectly. Now we won't have to worry about this new edge being exposed because we're actually gonna use corner guards later to tie this all together, make it look really nice and pretty. All right, so we have the entire front of the bar on now, and it is looking fantastic. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Really happy with the pallet wood. Now, I will tell you this, pallet wood is incredibly delicate. So when you are putting on this front, for all these screws you're putting in, make sure you drill your pilot holes. This wood, I actually don't know how old this wood is. I don't know how long it's been sitting out in the weather. Some of it looks good, some of it looks pretty weathered, but definitely drill your pilot holes. Otherwise, you could end up splitting your pallet wood, and that's really not good uh, because, you know, just the delicate, how, the delicate nature of this stuff, you don't want to have to go back, cut more pieces. Now, while I had it over on its back, I actually put the wheels on. So I got the casters on here. This thing moves around now. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to go ahead and finish the sides in the same exact way we did this one on the front. 21 inches for the top pieces of wood and 22 for the bottom lined up the exact same way. So I'm going to take care of that and then we'll get on to the next step. All right, so I have finished for the day. I've got the entire front and the sides on. Just spin it around here. That's the left side. Hopefully you can see that well enough. That's the right side here. So everything came together really nicely. Everything is nice and flush, especially with the top. Our tabletop, when we do this, is gonna go on and be very nicely fitting. Uh, so for this, I was initially gonna do three quarter inch corner guards on the corners here to tie it all together, but I'm actually really happy with how the pallet wood pulled together to close the gaps there. So I'm actually just gonna leave it like that because this pallet wood is kind of rounded here on the side. So it actually looks really nice, gives it a little bit more of a rustic touch. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to get into starting on some of the trim and on the inside of it where we're going to put our shelves. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for part one of the reclaimed wood rolling bar video. As much as I would like to make this a 45 minute video, not really sure if a lot of people out there have the attention span for that for a YouTube video. So I am going to split it up into two parts. The second part of this video, we're going to check out adding the tabletop 
as well as all of the trim pieces, staining it, sanding the tabletop, making it look nice and perfect, and adding some recessed lighting underneath the bar to give it a nice little flare. So if you are interested in checking out part two and finishing building this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell icon so you get the notifications whenever I upload new content. If you liked the video, remember to give it a thumbs up on your way out. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you on part two. Take it easy, everybody.